Why do I say that? Why do I talk about us being the role models? Well, we actually did a climate assessment survey where we actually surveyed the medical students in Rochester uh, last May. And the climate assessment survey was driven by some challenges that the students were feeling both in the classroom in the environment um, that they didn't feel that the environment was all that it should be. So I want to share with you some of the highlights from the climate assessment survey um, which provided an opportunity for the students to, to show the strengths as well as opportunities for improvement within the learning environment. So this was a, a, a survey that was actually uh, helped developed by Michelle Van Ryan and Sean Fallon who actually did the institutional climate assessment survey so they're well versed in this it was given to all four classes of the medical school and about two-thirds of the students actually filled out the climate assessment survey so there were some areas for improvement that really kind of related to the faculty that I wanted to share with you. One is um, concerns about free, the ability to freely and openly express diverse ideas and perspectives, and that's all across the board. Um, so really having sometimes tough conversations in classes about um, social issues or, or differences in patients, things of that nature, that they didn't really necessarily feel that it was a safe environment to have the conversations or that the faculty actually felt comfortable in having those discussions. And so I think really keeping attuned to, as we're in the classroom, having students who may potentially raise issues that may feel uncomfortable but really create an environment where the faculty encourage that discussion. Um, other areas were free and open discussion of bias, discrimination, and fairness. Some of the other things including diversity, recruitment, LGBTI, sense of belonging, and um, faculty issues including respect for diverse patients. So we had in our um, actual uh, we had a fireside chat and we gave the students an opportunity to talk about some of the things that they've seen and you'll see it in some of the data. So respect for people of different backgrounds, patients, um, respect for people of different body sizes, respect for people with disabilities. These were things that students were actually picking up sometimes in the classroom but also as they were out on the wards with their professors and so I think we all having medical students it provides an extra added layer of responsibility to us as they're in the formative stages to really model that behavior to set them off on a good course and to really try to minimize the hidden curriculum so our words can say one thing and our actions can say another uh, and we're going to need all of your help to make sure that that occurs not only with the people in this room but with our colleagues as well so let me just give you a few statistics and I know I am violating every good teaching principle because I've got PowerPoint slides and I'm lecturing at you but sorry uh, maybe after this I'll learn to be better than teaching but so related to free and open expression of diverse ideas and perspectives 38 per, only 38 percent of the students moderately or strongly agreed that faculty actively encourage free and open expression of diverse values, ideas, opinions, or belief. And 50 percent agreed that other students encourage free and open expression. So it wasn't just faculty, it was creating that ability for whatever perspectives within the classroom that everybody could really express those ideas. And only 17% moderately or strongly agreed that they felt comfortable speaking up with, when they disagreed with a faculty member. About a third of the patients moderately or strongly agreed with the statement that the faculty freely and openly discuss issues of bias, bias discrimination, and fairness. And about 50% felt that other students freely and openly discussed. Um, they t we looked at some of the experiences of obese and overweight students and there were, although half strongly disagreed that there was prejudice, there were uh, within that other 50 percent a number of students that really felt that there was some bias against overweight people that affected them personally and they saw it actually manifest in, uh, in um, attitudes towards patients. Um, sense of belonging was something that I think caught much of the leadership's attention. So um, really when you looked at the groups, the, the uh, uh, 
people that were anything but majority males felt to a lesser degree, although not statistically significant, that they that there was a lesser sense of belonging. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to make every one of our medical students feel that they're that there's a great sense of belonging. Now, some may say this is a reflection of Rochester and it's different than here, but I think it's just something to be aware of um, because we want these students to feel that they belong because that's going to impact their ability to learn in this environment. And we really want these students to consider Mayo Clinic potentially for their lifelong home if we want them and they want us. And so that sense of belonging is something that's extremely important to us. Um, about uh, is, excuse me, overall about 60% of students moderately or strongly agree that faculty show as much respect for racial and ethnic minorities they, as they do for white students. Um, so that was an issue that we picked up on. Um, about 68% of students moderately or strongly agreed that faculty show as much respect for female students as they do for their male students. And about overall 60% of the students moderately or strongly agree that faculty show as much respect for LGBTI students as they do for heterosexual students. Um, and only 40% of students moderately or strongly disagree that they witness racial, racial insensitivity from faculty. So these were just, this is a flavor of some of the issues that we identified in the climate survey. Um, that I would encourage if you want more detail, because I can't go through all of the data, it's actually on the diversity and inclusion website on the intranet. We've asked our diversity and inclusion council to actually help to start work through some of these issues. And this, I just picked out faculty. There were curricular issues, there were admissions issues, there was a lot of things, but I just picked this out. But And I, you know, and I don't want to lecture at you about this, but I just want you to know that, you know, I think, Sometimes until you ask or you look at this or you try to examine this, you don't necessarily really think that there may be anything wrong with the learning environment or there's no opportunities for improvement. But I think we, we're starting out new here. And so we need to just kind of be cognizant of some of these issues. So in summary, um, I know we're all committed to excellence uh, in content in the classroom and in its environment as a whole. Um, we're here to support you as faculty. Um, this is not going to be easy, opening a new campus. Um, again, there are going to be bumps in the road and there are going to be frustrations. Um, but I want to thank all of you all for the work that you've done so far and the work, the many hours that you're going to do in the future. So thanks.